Hello everyone, I'm Marina and it's a Cromel School. In today's video, you will see how incorrect nail architecture may affect the way nails look. Fat nails. I will do a transformation. Let's get started. These nails were done in a nail salon, but they look uneven, slightly cracked and not aesthetically pleasing. I'd like to transform them and do a thinner, more flattering coating. Measuring the fridge with a micrometer, we can see that it is about 2 to 3 millimeters thick, and there is a crack in the center of the index nail. When a client's nails are thin and flexible, aligned with a rubber base and coated with a hard gel, that causes cracks. As well as using a hard base and a rubber gel coating. There is a conflict between two materials, so we need to match base and color coatings. And a top coat as well, to avoid such cracks. I'm removing the coating. And when the coating is super thick, we need to remove it using a ceramic or carbide drill bit. Just take it off, leaving a thin layer left. Don't leave too much on the edges, though, because that will make the nails look thicker. And make sure to remove all the liftings to avoid new ones. We may keep a thin base coat layer, given there are no liftings or air pockets. Moving on to a manicure. And here we've got oily and rubbery cuticles. So I need to dry them a bit using some talcum powder. But first, I need to push the cuticle and open up its pocket. This powder absorbs excess moisture and prevents a drill bit from getting clogged during the procedure. Note that these cuticles are neither thin or sensitive. They are oily and thick. So I recommend using blue drill bits with this cuticle type. But I forgot to polish the surface to make it matte. So I just do it afterwards. Before is also an option. Just make sure to do it before cutting the cuticle so as not to ruin the manicure with a file or a buffer. I remove all the leftover liftings and file off some pterygium to make e-filing easier. I'm using a blue diamond flame drill bit, 0.21 in diameter. This one is just right, because there is lots of pterygium, and I need to clean it up well. I noticed that on this nails, there is more pterygium left on the right side. I guess her previous nail tech could not process them well. There is way more skin left here than on the left sides, so I need to clean them up. We can use this drill bit to lift up the cuticle in its rim and make sure the pocket is clean. We can also polish the folds and the sinuses with it. We go with this color only dealing with thick cuticles oily and rubbery ones that are hard to clean up. With thin and sensitive cuticles, we use red drill bits, so as not to cut the skin. We can use a blue flame drill bit to remove hangnails. It will smooth them out and prevent new ones. It's one of my favorite manicure steps because it perfectly shows before and after. Do you like manicure and nail extensions? If you do, join my new online course on nail sculpting from zero to pro and get your certificate. The course is available worldwide. For more information, click the link in the description box below. I'm cutting the cuticle with scissors. Since the cuticle is thick and spreading, I remove most of it with one pass. 
and there's some more skin left. We can cut it, just make sure not to make hangnails. I barely touch the skin while filing. Or we can polish the skin with a blue drill bit. My model's cuticles and nail folds are a combination. There are oily cuticles and dry nail folds. So I grab a tiny disc, attach an abrasive file, and polish the lateral folds and the sinuses in the forward position to smooth them out. That's it! Now let's prepare the nails for a coating. Degrease and apply an acid-free primer for better bonding. I will be using a rubber base coat because my model's nails are thin and flexible. And with harder materials, they may crack. Cure this base layer for 30 seconds. I will align the nails with a strengthening base coat. It's called Rubber Strong. So you may wonder, what's it after all? Rubber or strong? So let's test out its plasticity. I do an aligning layer on top of some glossy surface and cure it. Remove the tacky residue, wait for it to cool down and try to bend it. We can see that it bends like a rubber base coat. But it's strong at the same time. It is less flexible than a regular rubber one. That indicates that it will both bend with the nail, form proper architecture and won't sag with time. And I love base coats doing both. I need to build up some nails. The index nail is a bit curved, so I need to lift up its tip. I'll be using this Milky Poly Gel by Imenka. This color matches the nail perfectly. And that's a great consistency. We need to align the nail with a brush or an orange stick and send it to cure. On the thumb, there are layers in the ingross points. We'd better fill them in with a thick material. Just pull out the lens, barely touching it, and send it to cure. Next up, let's build up the architecture with a base coat. I line the rest of the nails with the base. I turn the hand over, even out the highlights, and send the nails to cure in the lamp. In case you need to file the surface, just wipe off the tacky residue and file it. I degrease the nails and file its shape. Don't forget to compare the nails in pairs to keep the length even. Tease the season to go for some glittery gel polishes. And these gel polishes by men are definitely one of the best, because they are super solid. Look, that is just one layer. But it's not recommended to do a thick layer with such gel polishes, because it will wrinkle while curing. Just do a couple of thin layers for a perfect coverage. So as not to risk it all. Since there is no tacky residue on the base coat, the color does not flow anywhere. I'm using a fan painting technique. There are many videos on gel polish application on my channel. And I share even more tips and life hacks in my online courses. So if you want to learn more about doing a coating close to the cuticle, make sure to check either of them out. We get a perfectly solid and deep color. Time for a top coat. I'm using a rubber one that will go with the coating, with no cracks. We used little base coat to avoid getting fat nails. So make sure not to use too much top coat either. Avoid doing thick alignment. 
secure in the lamp and file the tips for more definition. Here's the final look. So please, never do fat nails. And don't leave layers in the ingrowth points. Don't forget to check out a video on this topic on my channel as well. I wish you all success in your work. Good luck. Bye-bye.